everybody, it's Romania Black, and we are on episode 19 of Spy Family, so I couldn't wait. <laughs> uh, this episode just came out today, and I am recording ahead because I'm going to be gone the next couple weeks, and so I wanted to go ahead and watch it. So I don't have any comments from episode 18. Uh, as of right now, episode 18 is about to come out on Patreon, and episode 17 will be on YouTube. So before I get to the next episode, I will likely have comments to talk about, but I am going to go ahead and watch this episode because one, I need to record ahead because I'll be gone, but two, I just couldn't wait. These last three or four episodes have been really, really good, like hilarious. Last week with Daybreak and Yuri and Anya's tutoring woes, I just, I couldn't help it. it they were so funny. Like the last couple episodes have been the type of humor that I really like. Um, this series, Mob Psycho, the type of humor that's in those series are kind of my jam. And so just kind of like off the wall, kind of weird humor. That's that's what this show does best when it has like just the bizarre humor. I'm not so much as like surface level, like surface level, like potty humor and stuff. Like, like Bond going in the litter box and stuff. Like that stuff does isn't funny to me, but just like the very weird, like with Yuri going, how'd the grammar assignment go? And she's like, what's grammar? Like that stuff's just hilarious. And then the physical comedy of Twilight, of Daybreak just being ridiculous and Twilight's, Twilight's like, what? That stuff gets me. So I've really, really enjoyed it. But yeah, so I've had a lot of fun with these last couple episodes. We're on episode 19. We have six episodes left of the season, if you can believe it. So that's crazy. Um, but yeah, I've really been enjoying Spy Family the last several weeks, and I have just been having a ball with it. I'm watching a lot of heavy and dark shows. <laughs> on my channel with the exception of like this and Sarune which are like the the light <laughs> the light breaking through the clouds um there's been a lot of like dour doom gloom and sadness in a lot of shows I've been watching and so this has been like a nice refrain from that I'm like good I need some I need some good wholesome happiness and comedy to kind of break through that and and get through it so yeah it's been fun so I'm excited to get to this episode and see what all we get and I hope that you all are too, but we're not gonna waste any more time. We're gonna dive right into this and see what happens. So I hope you all enjoy, but we're gonna start Spy Family episode 19, and we're gonna do that here in three, two, one, and let's go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This episode, it continues the trend. It continues the trend. It was just great. It was great. It was so funny. So, oh my gosh, what a... I was wondering as we got closer with George Glooman and the plot, I was like, his family is not really going to go bankrupt. They're going to be fine. And he's going to have to go back to school the next day and face up to basically... <laughs> face up to having like gone through all this ordeal that that part of the episode was hilarious and then the part about mama becomes the wind that part was more sweet than anything but oh my god oh my god so so let's just walk through this episode there were a couple things i wanted to like pay attention to so we have gloom and pharmaceuticals right we came to an official agreement it'll be executed next month on the 10th i offer my condolences and so he says, so when he says, sir, you want to call me that much longer, I, you know, he had a smile on his face, but at the time you don't really know that they're going to be consolidated and that the Desmond family is taking over. So that is interesting to note, just like in the back of our heads, we, the audience can know that, okay, the, the Desmond family is now merging and, and assimilating the gloom and pharmaceutical. So the Desmond family is gaining a pharmaceutical company as part of its repertoire. So that's interesting. Like, okay, so Desmond, Damien's family is now gonna own a pharmaceutical company. They presumably have ties perhaps with maybe the the group of scientists that helped create Anya and Bond essentially. Maybe that's my headcanon anyway. So that's interesting that the, it's kind of, it's played off as cutesy and funny in this episode, but in the back of our heads, because Spy Family has that little tiny edge of seriousness baked into all the comments there is in the back of our heads going okay well Damien's family is they've gained a pharmaceutical company they're monopolizing they're like gaining all these different corporations and I'm sure that Lloyd is taking note of that in the news as well but man George's dad like like father like son seems so they seem so over the top and dramatic but he's like okay Gloom and pharmaceutical company CEO 
He's like the Desmond group. Ne you needn't say anything else. Can't fight the times. So yeah, he's like, oh, don't go any further. He's like, yeah, we're being merged by this group. It's the sign of the times. Everything's a monopoly, right? Our business was a candle flickering in the wind. And he's like, what am I going to tell my son? But I'm like, the way he says it does lend his kid to believe that, oh my God, our family's going to be destitute <laughs> because he's going to lose his job. When in reality, he's like, how do I tell my kid I'm not going to be the CEO anymore that we're giving our company over to Damien's family? But man, George, George Gloomin, what a name, what an illiterate name. How am I supposed to tell him that our pharmaceutical company will cease to be in less than a month? And so then, yeah, he has this giant plot. I love that the little leaf is constantly in this episode, but he's got this plot to, to get Damien. Uh, it was honestly a very ingenious plot and almost worked if Anya hadn't saved the day. But yeah, so I like that. I like that Anya kind of sucks at sweeping too. Or no, it's Becky. Becky's the one sweeping. Becky kind of sucks at sweeping. She's like missing the, the dustpan. Also, I, I don't know on a windy day of giving these kids brooms and telling them to go sweep up leaves. Like, I guess there's no leaf blower in this world, but still. So I like Anya's telling Becky, like, my papa is p at peace because I didn't get any bolts. And Becky's like, oh, is my sweet Lloyd pretty strict? I'm like, oh, girl, you got it bad. Becky has got it bad. And she's like, papa is a monster when it comes to the mission. That's putting it lightly. Lloyd's pretty serious. He's a perfectionist. Yeah, I'm glad that Anya understands her father being like Lloyd is a perfectionist. Very much so. He wants everything to be so-so. And she and I like that Becky says, well, I guess it can be pretty rough when a parent's expectations are so high. So suggesting that Becky's family has high expectations for her or is it saying that Becky's family does not have high expectations for her? We don't really know much about Becky's family except her dad makes military equipment. That's pretty much it interesting she's like but my sweet lloyd sounds like an amazing monster too and anya's like quit like having a crush on my father so da damien damien being a six-year-old boy is like just tries to have all these antics and he's like desmond rolling sweep desmond style all i could think of when he said desmond style was all i could think of was yuri on ice and like jj style and I'm, damien if there's anything you can do right now it's not be like jj <laughs> But the rolling sweep, like, he just makes a big mess. He doesn't help out at all. It just makes things worse, right? It just makes a bunch of dust and cough. I'm surprised a school official didn't see him do that and give him, like, a talking to. But, oh, uh, yeah, Damien. He's just being, like, a little boy, being a brat. And then his friends were like, oh, good job, Lord Damien. Good, excellent, well played. Our school's cleaner already. No. And, of course, it just makes everybody cough and sneeze. That one girl in the background kind of looked like she'd be Sylvia's daughter. She had, like, the big glasses and the red hair and pigtails. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, all these girls and, and... Well, there's a guy, too. Everybody has a... At first, I thought it was a bunch of girls, like, having a crush on Damien. But, no, there's some guys there, too. And they're like, the kids who get Stella through sheer talent are something else. Yeah, and he's like, well, but of course. So Damien is Damien is rolling with the ego that he has a Stella, and everybody's getting on with him about it. I'm like, our Anya has a Stella too, and they say we should have a study session at Damien's place to get to know each other better. And so I, Anya's like, this is perfect. Yes, we could go to Damien's for a study session. That will get me in the house. We don't have to have a social nothing. Damien as a tutor. I, I'm really wondering if they'll run with that in a future episode, if they will run with the idea of Damien being a tutor for Anya, if Henry will suggest it, that he's like, oh, well, you could be a tutor for Anya. And Damien's like, no, not my crush. And Anya's like, yes, get me in the house. So I wonder if that will become a thing. I would actually love that. Uh, Becky is also like the best friend possible. I'm so glad Anya has a friend like Becky because Becky's like, oh, they're so dumb showering him with praise like that. Like, like he's something special or something. And then Anya, she's like, oh, she's like, I'm impressed with his test results, but he's still a brat. I, Becky's cool. I like her. She's like, well, he's still a brat, even though he got good test results. So we shouldn't be putting him on a, a pedestal. And I love that Anya's like, I would like to study at the second son's house. <laughs> she doesn't call him Damien. She still calls him second son. And Becky's like, oh, so is it because you have a crush on Damien? She's like... What what's really going on with you and him? And Anya's like, excuse me, what? And I love the storm clouds coming in, and that's when George like comes up. I thought for a second that he was gonna like hit Damien with the the leaf scooper, but I, luckily that did not happen. 
But she's like, I'm sorry for calling him a huge brat. And Anya's like, what? So, yeah, it's funny because Becky is being really nice. She's like, oh, I didn't mean to call the guy you have a crush on a brat. That's okay. Sorry about that. It's like such a friend thing to do. Like, if you have a crush on someone and you like them and then your friend was like, they're a jerk. And you're like, well, I kind of like them. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, like, no offense to you liking them. I just, you know, it's one of those situations. So, but Anya, she's like already moved on from the conversation and is overhearing George say that he hates him. He's like, oh, Lord Damien, please observe my fire strong axle final strong dustpan too. What? Ewan says, Lord Damien, please observe my fire strong axle final strong dustpan. What? And I like that Becky has like the blush in her cheeks and she's trying to like get Anya to confess about Damien. She doesn't realize that Anya is cluing in to George, not paying attention to Becky. And Becky assumes that she's just like avoiding the conversation because she has a crush on Damien. It's like the most perfect miscommunication possible. And then everybody's like, well, you boys stop playing around. Okay. I'll never forgive you, Desmond. I'll never, ever forgive you. And Anya's like, oh my God, no. And he's like, I brought you a dustpan, Damien. And he's like, oh, thanks. And then that's when Anya asks, who's that? And she's like, oh, George. He's in our class, George Gloomin. Mm-hmm. How did he get a Stella? Uh-huh. Yeah, and then he's like, the plan has failed. Yeah, I even had my butler hire a spy to change all of his test results to failing scores. So George hired Daybreak. George had his elderly butler who looks like he could be easily scammed. He's like sitting there shaking. He gives the money three months worth of his allowance, which we don't know how much that is, but still. He's like, as you wish. And Anya's like, oh my God. Like, that's the spy boss. There's a spy boss in our class. Like, so they can hire, sp hire spies. So the spy f papa fought the other day. So she knows from listening to Lloyd's mind about Daybreak. And so Becky's like, so hey, more importantly, what do you think about Damien? Like, Becky is trying to pry so hard. And Anya's like, Anya's curious about that guy. Who is he? And then Becky's like, what? No way. Are you like, okay with any guy, Anya? So it's like, no, Becky's like, well, really? Are you cool with just any guy? Do you have just, do you have a crush on every boy? And Anya's like, no, I just want to know about him. And Anya's like, no. She's like, I just want to know. Don't bother with that guy. He's so, well, gloomy. I like that Becky's like looking out for her friend. Like you can do better, Anya. You can do better. <laughs> And then that's when he brings out the cigarette butt. I'm assuming maybe his dad smokes. He's like, and then Anya's like, he's trying to get the second son expelled. That'll ruin the mission. No. Anya's expressions when she's nervous or scared are kind of like Lloyd's and it's hilarious. And then he's like, oh, what's this? I love the animation here. He's like, it's a tis a cigarette butt. He's like, don't tell me that you. And Damien's like, I don't smoke. I've never even smoked before. He's like, sir, I need you right away. And then... Damien's like, well, I told you that's not mine. And then that's when he like punches himself and makes it look like Damien hit him. And Damien's like, what the hell? What the heck are you doing? And then that's when he tells the guy that Damien punched him and he's reporting the cigarette butt. And Damien's like, what the hell? No. And he's about to get in trouble. And the thing of it is, Damien doesn't even like deny it at first. He's just kind of flabbergasted, like thrown off, like what's happening? And then Anya steps forward. And he's like, if it's true, you're in a heap of trouble. And I like that his friends are like, no, Lord Damien would never do something like that, which he wouldn't. Damien wouldn't just punch somebody outright. That's the thing about his character. And he's like, he's lying. And, and then the teacher says, well, you guys are his followers. So I can't trust a word you say. And that's when Anya stands up for him. She just like casually, calmly, coolly walks onto the scene, stands in front of Damien, who's like, what the hell? And she's like, our second son wouldn't do that. And her eyes are like Lloyd's. They're like, like slanted, like very serious. Like Anya was watching. He just fell down on his own. And George is like, oh, hell no, what? And I love that the teacher... Again, Anya's villain origin story. I love the teacher's like, what in the world? Her eyes can see through everything. And I love that she's just sitting there with her little eyes slit. It's like, she's the girl who got the bolt on the first day of school. I love it. And she's just like staring through his soul. It's like, she's bad news. My 30 years as a teacher are telling me this. Anya is going to be a villain by the end of this series. I'm convinced because everybody's like, oh my God, she's like the worst. 
And he's like, ah, don't. she has scared the teachers away. She's that threatening. He's like, don't, don't try to bother the teacher with your silly games. So he just thinks it's all a big hoax. And he's like, go back to cleaning. And she's like, so, hmm, so proud of herself. And Damien's like, oh, you? And she's like, I can't let you get expelled. Which is like such the badass cool line. She's like, I can't let you get expelled, Damien. <laughs> Which she says it because of the mission. But Damien is like, he's like, he's like, what? And she's like, plan B will be ruined. But Damien is having like an existential crisis. And Becky's like, you were so cool. I, I felt like squeeing. I, I think I did in the reaction. <laughs> And Anya's like, squee? What? What does that mean? And she's like, I'm sure your feelings got through to Damien. <laughs> to Becky! To Becky, this is like, this is like the ultimate, like, confession. Like, you just saved him from getting in trouble. Like, Damien has to know that you like him now. Mm-hmm. And she's like, and Anya's like, what? And Damien is like, just completely red. Like, what the heck are you talking about? Like, Damien, get a clue. This thing, the thing is, Damien doesn't need to get a clue because it's not the right clue to get. Anya doesn't have a crush on him, but everything she does leads him to believe that. Poor Damien. He's like, rah, rah, rah. he's like, I, no one asked for you to help. I could have handled it myself. And that's when George says, why'd you get in the way? And the, so then we have this big misunderstanding. I love Damien. He's like, wait a minute. You, George, what, what's going on? What the hell? Who the hell do you think you are? Where are you trying to pull? And while Damien is saying this, he's still like total blush. And that's when George gives the big sob story about his life being over. And I love that he just puts his hand up to the tree like, it all started a month ago. Like just, it's like the biggest trope, but it's so hilarious. And he's like, your family is going to cause, he's like, your family is going to cause my family to go bankrupt. And I love that Damien's like, yeah, that sucks, but I don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> he's like, I don't, I, I can't do that. He's like, well, I thought if you got in trouble, it would cause chaos. And then that would like make it to where my family would be able to keep our company from going bankrupt. Like like the logic of a six-year-old, right? Six-year-old logic. And Damien's like, my father's company would never do something so evil. So I think that's important to note, right? That Damien obviously does not believe his dad is doing anything wrong because in that country, why would they? And so I like the idea is like, my dad would never do something like that. Like that's evil. And to, to be kind of fair, they don't. They just, they conglomerate, but they don't like fire his dad and his family and they don't go bankrupt. So yeah, it's it's kind of interesting to see Damien like work through it. Be like, no, that's not the case at all. What are you talking about? He's like, don't try to drag me into adult matters in the first place. And Becky's like, that's going too far. So yeah, there is something to this here where Damien's like, I don't want to be involved in my dad's dealings. That has nothing to do with me. And it's like, no, it doesn't. And Becky's like, same way. And I'm going to be curious to see if, I'm going to be curious to see if like Anya, because Anya is very much involved in adult matters. She is involved in an adult thing. That That's kind of the crazy theme about this episode in this moment is that Damien is like, I don't want to get drug into adult affairs because we're kids. And Becky's like, yeah, the adults wouldn't drag their children into stuff like this. We let the adults handle the adult things. But with Anya, Anya is involved in adult matters. Lloyd has made this fake family and has involved her in this. And she is central to the plot. So it's kind of this cool thing of you have an adult using kids and then you have the kids in this episode saying, yeah, adults would never do that. And it's like, it's, it's interesting, right? But yeah, I just, it's, it's interesting to think about, right? And so, and so George goes through this whole thing where he just wants, he's like, he just has this big sob story about them not understanding. And he does point out something interesting. There's this interesting conversation he points out where he tells Damien like how lucky he is and how privileged he is and that he basically, he kind of calls Damien out for getting Estella because of his family name. And Emil and Ewan come to his like side immediately to support him. And I do agree with Emil and Ewan that, that Damien Stella is not because of his family name. It's because he got the high grade on the test. And he didn't have to have the grades altered or anything. Damien's just smart and he earned it on his own. So I do like that. I like that Damien is not 
Damien is kind of, he goes above the stereotype of like the privileged child from like the big bad. And normally in a, in a series in literature, it would be easy to make him be this like privileged pompous brat that gets everything handed to him. But in Damien's case, he doesn't really have family support and he does things for himself. So I like that. I like that we get that juxtaposition and he kind of proves George wrong in this episode, which is really good. But then George, he just has like, Again, they're six years old. So him having a tantrum is completely normal for a little kid. And I could just see all of this playing out like in a little kid's mind exactly as it sounds. He's like, he's like, I want to experience my last day at the school to the fullest. It's like, I just wish somebody would buy me a juice and give me like the most expensive bowl of caviar and rice. And all the kids, they just... They comply to it, but like the facial expressions, like the wind blowing through his hair, everything. It's absolutely hilarious. And it's so damn funny. But he just goes through, he's like, I wonder what it would be like to, he's like, my grudge with, my grudge with the Desmond starts to take control. If only I had Estella and knew how it felt. And so then Damien, Damien lets him borrow Estella. Like he's really nice. Like they're all super nice to him. And it's absolutely hilarious. Just all the tropes and everything. But then he talks about like becoming a slave and how his family are going to be sent to Astalis and how they're going to be like destitute and alone and like tortured and, and all this stuff. And then Anya steps up and says, don't worry, the West is a safe place. And she says, I know because Lloyd and the important lady, aka Sylvia, are from there. So that's kind of cool that, that Anya has this understanding by knowing Lloyd and knowing Sylvia that she's like, no, they can't all be bad there because I know these people are good. She's like, you'll be fine. And she's heard enough from Lloyd to know that, that, that he would be safe if they went there. And of course, George doesn't get it. He's like, this girl's never set foot there. How would she know? Mm-hmm. Papa and the important lady are really nice. And then he starts crying. And I love, he's like, why is salt water pouring out of my eyes? <laughs> It'd almost be more perfect if he's like, like, why is LaCroix coming out of my eyes? But it's so great. He's like, I just, I, the part here at the very end where he's like, he's like, all I wanted, Caius, for one more thing. He's like, I was really looking forward to the choral contest at the end of the year where I could connect with you all through song. <laughs> like this song is the way for all of them to connect. It's the most cheesy, stereotypical thing. But of course because this is hilarious, Becky like starts singing. And I love that Anya's like, Becky, for real? <laughs> I love that Anya's like, are we really doing this? And then Damien starts his little dance. Like Damien starts to dance and get everybody to sing and everything. And Anya's just like, and then they all like gather around and sing and George is like, oh, thank you everyone. And it's the best thing is that there's this beautiful chorus and everybody's just getting along, having this wonderful moment. And Damien's dancing. Damien's not singing, he's dancing. So maybe Damien can't sing very well. But Anya's just, <laughs> Anya's just looking at them like, what? <laughs> Anya's face throughout this entire episode is freaking hilarious. So damn funny. And she's just like, I, I, villain origin story. She's just like, I can't get over it. It's the funniest damn thing. I, these episodes just got funnier and funnier. And then Damien even gives him like his expensive school supply kit. Like, you know, when he goes off to his other school and everyone's sitting there with like items to give him. Like one kid has a dumbbell. One kid has like a freaking sword. And the other kids have like a soccer ball and a book and stuff. And honestly, I really thought, I, if you've not seen Neon Genesis Evangelion, it will make no sense. But I was really hoping that they'd all like start clapping and telling him congratulations. <laughs> if they had, I would have lost it. That would have been it. I wouldn't be able to finish the episode. It would have been over. But yeah, he just basically leaves and says he'll do his best and leaves the school. And even as the dramatic, like as he's leaving, the dramatic superimposed shot of him with the flowers at the end, like waving goodbye. Like it's the, it, like it's the death of every character. Like when a character dies in an anime, it's just, and, and Anya gives him a leaf. She's like, I found this on the side of the road. <laughs> can't, I can't do it. It's too funny. But then yeah, so Anya and she's like, and that's what happened. I love that she just went home and told her parents 
starts the story they're like what happened at school today she recounted all of this that happened and yours like what a lovely story like yours was so enraptured like what a great mom she was like what a great story and what i like is that when it transitions over to lloyd his eyes narrow and he's like but gloom and pharmaceuticals just got bought up. It's not going bankrupt. Like he has the instant dose of reality, the hard cut to reality. And I like he's got a little bit of lines under his eyes. Like, like he just tediously listened to the story and was like, are you freaking kidding me? And Anya's like, shock. Like, oh my God. And his dad's like, yes, our company was facing a financial crisis, but the Desmond group saved us. So yeah, so basically they bought them out because, and that's kind of the twist. You think, oh, well, it's this monopoly. It's what, you know, happens. And it seems kind of sinister that, that Damien's family is buying them out. But then you find out the twist that their family is facing financial crisis. And so the Desmond group saved them from it. So that adds a layer to it as well. Like, oh, well, the Desmond group saved us. We were going to go bankrupt, but they saved us by taking over the company. It's like, ah, so that's interesting. And poor George. George is like, oh my God, no. Like, are you kidding me? But, and then he's like, oh yeah, but the Desmond group welcomed me and the whole research team with open arms. Like they actually did something good for his family. And George is like, oh, we're screwed. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back to school with all of this. And so then, yeah, he's so embarrassed when he goes back and has to face everyone and everybody's like, you bet. And I love that Becky and them's like, you better give everything back to us. And he's like, oh, and Damien's like, yeah, you better pay us back for that juice too. But then Anya, she pats him. She's like, it's okay, man. It happens to the best of us. I love it. I love Anya. She's like willing to offer him a pat on the shoulder. Like, it's okay, man. You tried. God, that episode's so funny. Hilarious. So then we have the other episode, which is Mama Becomes the Wind, which is really cute. And I like what this episode does is that it gives Anya some credit because yeah, like Lloyd comes in, he's like, you got to get for school. You're going to be late. And Anya's like, Rrr. and you wonder if she's going to maybe oversleep and forget something. And she does oversleep, but she gets ready and she leaves the stuff there on the, on the desk. But the thing of it is she didn't need it for school today. She wasn't going to gym today. And so Lloyd gets on to her being like, you'll get expelled if you keep being late. And then he goes off to his mission, which his mission is to go to the school to spy on Anya, which is great. And then what I love is that Yor sees something on the desk when Bond comes out of the room and she's so damn polite. She's just like, excuse me, Anya, for going into your personal space, but I want to check something out and realizes that Anya may have forgotten her clothes and thinks she's going to get expelled because of it. I love her interpretation of not only Henry Henderson, because it's just him flailing around with his hair flying everywhere. Elegantly, of course. It's great. But her image of what Anya will look like as a delinquent is freaking hysterical. Hysterical. Like she has the space dandy pompadour with the little cones. She like spits out a pink lollipop, has like a yellow like scooter, has like a black jacket and fishnets. Like, oh my God. It's absolutely hilarious. And then you were like, no, Anya, Lloyd will be so sad if you become a delinquent. But she tries to get the, the clothes to her in numerous ways. The bus system doesn't work. So then you just relies upon what she's good at. And that is basically doing parkour. <laughs> you just does parkour all the way to Eden Academy to get her the stuff. And I love it. She just spider monkeys her way through the entire school grounds. And the one boys now will forever believe that she's the spider woman. And I love she's up against the glass. You see like the, the strands of hair against the glass as well. Like it looks scary. Oh my God. It's absolutely hilarious. But she does manage. And then she, I love she goes to the farm, Eden Farm, sees the Gene Simmons cow and is like, oh, it's those animals. And the cow bows to her. Like, like these animals bow to her whim. It's amazing. Like it, it, the, the cow has utmost respect for her in that moment. But then Lloyd sees her. Again, Lloyd has had a few instances now where he doesn't know Yor. So he questions whether or not she's onto him or not. And she wonders if he's figured her out. And I'm like, Lloyd, come on, you know that she hasn't. And he like starts to second guess everything. And then thinks, wait a minute, no. He's like, no, it couldn't possibly be it. Like he starts to panic, right? 
But then, thank God she finds Anya, because for a second there, I was like, are we about to do that whole misdirect? Like, miscommunication is one of my least favorite tropes in anime. And the point where they, like, miss each other three or four times, I'm like, is this really going to happen? Thank God she saw her, though. <laughs> thank God. She saw her and was able to get her get her the gym clothes. And I like that Anya looks down at her and she almost like, she has a very five to six year old reaction where she looks down at it and she's like, we don't have gym today. I didn't make a mistake. You made a mistake. And I'm like, ah, because I've had little cousins and that is exactly what they will do. I have made mistakes before with them, been like, oh, do you forget this? And they're like, no, you didn't know what day this was, what? And they, it's their, they don't mean to be menacing, but they could get some sass to them. And Anya had the sass there be like, we don't have gym class today. <laughs> and I love that you were just like, what? What do you mean? Huh? And she's like, so I don't need gym clothes. It's great. I love this episode. And poor Yor, she's just like, and I love that Anya just goes over and pats her on the shoulder like, there, there. You made a boo-boo. But then Lloyd makes up for it where he's like, he sees it and he uses the excuse that he came. He was in the neighborhood for a, for a home visit and used it to smoothly see what she was up to. I'm like, smooth, Lloyd. Smooth indeed. And he's like, oh, she's like, oh, did you go to the hospital? And he's like, oh, yeah, I, I went to a house to call on a patient after I recovered at home. And it's like, mm-hmm. And so then he asks, what are you doing here, your... And she's like, oh, well, actually. And she explains the gym clothes. And what I am glad here is that she finally talks to him. And Lloyd, he thanks her. Lloyd's like, well, thank you for checking up on Anya. Because if she had forgot something, it could have been really bad. So thanks for taking the time to do it and be covert about it. Like, good Anya. And so Lloyd's like, I was wondering what was going on. And I like these, like, I guess I didn't need to run into her to check. He's like, Lloyd is figuring out that he can trust your, because this is like the second or third time where he's had to like check up on her, like make sure everything's okay. And in reality, it was fine. Like everything was fine. We we're all good, but he just didn't know. Right. So I like that. I like that Lloyd, he actually wasn't sure what to do and managed it all managed to work out. Right. So I like that. I like that he's getting to where he can trust Yor. And then Yor, I'm glad that she comes out and says, she's like, oh, I wasn't of any use and I got the wrong idea. And she's like, if I had checked her schedule, she's like, if I had checked her schedule, I wouldn't have gone out of my way and done that, which that's an easy mistake to make. I've done it so many times. Like if I had just checked this one thing, I wouldn't have gone through these other thousand steps. But when you're panicked, you forget that sort of thing, right? And so it's easy to do. So she made a simple mistake. And she says, I'm a failure as a mother. And here's the thing. Lloyd says, oh, that's not true. And so in Lloyd's mind, he says, if your continues to be depressed, it'll affect the mission. Okay. So yes, that's true. But he says, oh, well, he's like, I know. He's like, I was thinking of having lunch somewhere before heading back to the hospital. Like, what if you just came with me and had lunch with me, your? And she's like, oh, well, sure. Thanks. I'd love to. So it's kind of it, the scene ends I'm like okay cool they're going on a date sure you sure Lloyd it's just you know just for the mission that's all but it creates this interesting kind of conundrum in that you have your if you look at it from yours perspective you know Lloyd is taking her out on a date taking her to dinner to lunch he's getting close to her as a bond right out of maybe the question is going to be is she going to eventually take it as more than platonic that's the question right that they're actually getting to know each other and in Lloyd's case it creates this weird kind of conundrum too because on the one hand Lloyd is convincing himself that he's just doing it for the mission he doesn't actually care for her he can't afford to care for her right because we had a whole thing with him and Frankie about how you can't do that but the more he keeps doing these things is he actually going to get attached to her and that's gonna affect in the end whether he wants to leave her or not for the mission. So, so yeah, it's, it's creating this conundrum slowly, but surely. And Lloyd keeps telling himself it's for the mission, but is there going to be a point where the line is crossed? And that's what, that's, what's interesting. And what I'm curious about, like, are we going to get to that point? And what's that going to be about and be like, but, but yeah, oh uh, man, I, these, this episode was so, 
so funny. The the tropes, the whole tropes with George, all the stops. Damien, Becky trying to be a wingman for Anya for Damien. Damien realizing it. Anya being like, I don't know what you're talking about. Anya continuing her villainous origin story. And then Yor and Lloyd slowly getting closer and closer, whether they like it or not. I don't know. I, I've loved these last several episodes. And we still have like five or six episodes left. So we haven't met the silver haired lady yet, but I don't want any spoilers. I'm sure she's going to show up in the last arc when we get to it, but this was really, really cute. So I am excited to hear your comments down below. Um, I am going to see some comments. Hopefully I'll have some comments to talk about before I watch episode 20. So before I watch episode 20, I'll hopefully see some comments from episodes 16 and 17 and 17 and 18. So that's really cute though. This episode was great. These last few episodes have been wonderful and I've really enjoyed them. So I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah, I will be back next week with episode 20 of Spy Family. Bye.